Hello everybody, Flamin' Shark back with another video and it is a rare appearance on camera in our Danganronpa series because we're doing a classic reaction to an anime, Danganronpa 3, The End of Hope's Peak Academy. This is going to be very interesting because this is a bit of uncharted territory. We've read some novels. We've played some visual novels. Uh, we've even done some shorter works. We've also played like a more actual like video game kind of cross between like almost a VN and a and like a weird shooter. We, we've done a lot in this series. But now, after all this time, it's time to react to an anime. And it feels weird as someone who the majority of my content on my in the history of my YouTube career, so to speak, is reacting to shows, it feels weird to be reacting to this show in a series where we have done so many things except a traditional show reaction. I am very excited for this, and because we're on camera, hello, for those, if, if I have any viewers who might only watch Danganronpa, you probably know what I look like from other thumbnails and stuff, but hi! You get to look at my beautiful face for these reactions to Danganronpa 3. I have a lot to say. Um, we've done a lot in this series, right? And really, there's four relevant works that we've covered. Danganronpa 1, Danganronpa 2, Danganronpa 0, and Ultra Despair Girls. And we're going to be talking about things, elements from all of those works. I think mostly 0, 2, and UDG. I don't think there's a lot from Trigger Happy Havoc that will necessarily be relevant because I think anything playing off of Trigger Happy Havoc probably also played off of Goodbye Despair, the second main game. Uh, so I don't think I have a lot to discuss about the original Danganronpa game as it pertains to my predictions and theories and just general thoughts going into this. But this is going to be a while, so we have a few things to celebrate. First of all, we got some soda, kind of my new favorite soda. Obviously, I always love Coke. You know, Dr. Pepper, I have a great relationship with that. This Sprite, Lemonade, Limonade, whatever the hell it is, it's fucking good. Ugh. So I need to bust out the good stuff because we're doing a Danganronpa anime and that shit's crazy. Mmm. Okay. So first things first. We're on camera. I might as well. I might as well show off the the drip. We got the. We're ready. We are ready. We got the Danganronpa shirt. And just to kind of update you guys, because you guys don't usually see these. Junko and Monokuma. We're balling. We're ready. I am expecting to see her, and I'll talk more about that later. Kyoko. Again, very hard to see through the reflection and the glare and all that. Which actually show the back. The back actually has a picture of the figure. And of course, Monokuma. Y y you gotta have Monokuma around. And... We got the best boy. The worst boy himself, of course. Mr. Komaeda. So that's just an update. That's the my uh, just kind of showing off my appreciation for this franchise that uh, we have. Yeah, that's we got Junko, we got Kyoko, we got Nagito. Um, over time, obviously, that collection will rise. I want to have one character from each of the main games. So when we finally play V three, I will probably get a figure of one of my favorite characters from V3. It's interesting, right? Because obviously Junko and Nagito are probably my two favorite characters in the series. Kyoko, I like her a lot. I don't think she's like top three, but she is um, hot as hell. And I think her design is awesome. So I, and I like her a lot. So that's kind of why we have a Kyoko figure. But uh, it'll be interesting to see, like I said, like, I, you know, there's a lot of characters in this series and the designs are so good in this series. So obviously a lot of characters I'd love to have figures of. In the future, as you know, I talk. I don't talk about it that much unless, unless like we come back to a series after I have figures. This is a case that it makes sense for. But I have a pretty nice collection growing um, of figures, slowly but surely. But yeah, I wanted to show those off. I think I might have shown off the Junko one. 
Because I think I had the Junko one when I was doing Danganronpa Zero. Uh, and I want to say there was a spot on camera in that. I could be wrong, though. It's been a while. But we're all ready. We got the shirt. We got the figures. I'm expecting to see... Honestly, probably all three of those characters. Because I'll talk about it. There's a lot to talk about. So first of all, I know structurally... And I actually knew about this a long time ago. I think I knew about this before I even played the first game. But I understand structurally the way the Danganronpa 3 anime works. At the same time, they were airing like three or four days apart. But at, at the same time, like in the same anime season, they aired the Danganronpa, future, uh, Danganronpa 3 Future Arc and the Danganronpa 3 Despair Arc. Essentially, kind of like they were two separate anime. But they were designed to be watched in release order, which does have you quite literally flipping between uh, the Future Arc and the Despair Arc every episode, which thus make, made my sets interesting. But I, I did, uh, we did acquire those sets not long ago. We also finally got the good file, like, sh shouts to the people who helped me out with that. Um, my Geen Thomas set person found someone. To make the sets for the series and then uh i had another uh lovely individual who uh uh helped uh acquire these lovely files that i'm sure will be awesome because they will have apparently i don't know the specifics but there's cool op stuff that happens in the series that wasn't on the blu-ray files i guess so there was a lot of work to be done um, and a couple people did some some legwork for me that uh i greatly appreciate so, uh, shouts to them for that. But let's actually get into the discussion, because I have a lot to say, because we have a lot to talk about between mainly, again, Danganronpa Zero. I'll, I'll say it in chronologically, Danganronpa Zero, Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls, and Danganronpa 2. Because, again, I think the events of DR1, I don't really think I need to recount any of that. I feel like... Obviously, we had the original killing game. Junko was the mastermind. Makoto kind of defeated her, quote-unquote, even though, in a way, she kind of defeated herself. But we're not going to get into the specifics of that. But in the aftermath of the first game, Junko became a martyr, uh, which triggered the remnants of despair and led to a whole bunch of incidents, in, in incidents including the ones depicted in Ultra Despair Girls and Goodbye Despair. Cool shit. Okay, here we go. Theory time, theory time, theory time. So, we have two arcs that you're supposed to watch episode by episode. The Future Arc, the Despair Arc. I know it's 12 and 11. It starts with Future Despair, Future Despair, but then the last Despair is actually Hope. So, first of all, structurally, this screams Future Arc is going to take place Post Danganronpa 2, it'll be the Danganronpa 3, right? The most, the newest entry in the series in ter chronologically. The Despair Arc will probably take place either before or after Danganronpa 0, but obviously before Danganronpa 1 in the midst of the tragedy right like the, the the building blocks of the tragedy will be further explored which they were explored in Danganronpa 0 but they will be further exp and I guess Danganronpa 2 really um they've kind of been explored piece by piece in everything now that I think about it but I think they will be explored further in the despair arc what I'm not sure about is whether the despair arc will take place before or after Danganronpa 0 Gut Instinct is after, because I don't know if they really want to bring uh, Ryoko Tanashi and, you know, and, um, you know, and Emma Boy uh, into it. It's going to be really interesting, right? Like, do they want to bring in the DR0 stuff? Like, are we going to at all talk about Ryoko, Matsuda, like those characters, right? There was a lot in that arc that was crazy. Uh, I expect we're finally going to get like a significant amount of Izuru Kamakura. And of course, probably the thing that I'm more excited for than Izuru specifically is actually seeing the remnants of despair as despairs. Like, I want to see despair Ibuki. I want to see despair 
Well, I mean, we kind of saw the Spare Me Con in DR2. I want to see, like, all these characters in their junkified forms, for lack of a better term. And I think that's going to be really interesting to see. And I think telling the story in the way that I think it's going to be structured makes a lot of sense because it'll allow us to finally see all of this stuff that was teased in DR2. In a way, paint, giving us a payoff for that plot twist near the end of DR2. And I imagine what we witness in the Despair arc in the past will have implications in what's happening in the present in the future arc, which will be... Because the future arc will be the actual, like, mainline story stuff. Now, the other thing that's interesting, right? The arcs are called Despair, Future, and then, like, the last episode's Hope, and then there's an OVA. Hope and despair, obviously, are the, you know, buzzwords of Danganronpa. But in Danganronpa 2, we pushed to the future, right? So it kind of was that, like, meta thing where it was like, hey, in Danganronpa 2, we basically said, we don't give a fuck about hope or despair. We're just going to fight for our future. Fuck this shit. They kind of, they kind of gave, they finally gave us, like, the real point of this story and, like, what it's really about, right? So there is that double meaning. Like, obviously, I do think the future arc will take place post-DR2, thus making it, quote-unquote, the future, really the present, but, um, I, I, because it's called the future arc, I kind of feel like the main character might be Hajime Nada. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Who's the main character? Now, in the Despair arc, I feel like it would only make sense for it to be Junko Onoshima and potentially Mukuro Ikusaba as well. I feel like in the future arc, it's obvious to say Makoto, but the thing is, it's called the future arc, and that's specific. Now, now you could say future foundation, you know, make the connection there, but I feel like there's an obvious connection to Hajime Hinata based on the plot of Danganronpa 2. Now, this is where it gets interesting. How will the remnants of despair play into the future arc? And this is why I think absolutely they're going to be... The despair arc is going to be about Junko, Mukuro, and the remnants. Because I think the remnants have to play into the future with the way they ended Danganronpa 2. Now, there's two ways this can go. I guess there's like kind of three. The minds of the friends of Sonia, Fuyuhiko, Kazuichi, Akane, and Hajime are never recovered. And the five of them just, you know, the five of them are around, though. The five of them and they're, you know, more like, oh, you know, in their kind of heroic overcoming sense, the five of them are kind of like what the... OG six are they're kind of like a new like just group of people that are motivated to you know work toward the future and all that fun stuff but they kind of act in a similar way to Hina, Hiro, Toko, Kyoko, Byakuya, and Makoto. Second possibility they wake up their friends they find a way to save their friends from the essentially brain dead states they are in and their friends, they help their friends recover, and all of those characters from DR2 end up having some positive impact in this. The third option, and this has two variances as well, we see their, the characters revived, but they actually do revert to their ultimate despair selves, and we get the remnants of despair in the present I say present, but it's the future arc. So, and I guess where I say there's variance in that is, would it be a situation where Sonia, Fuyuhiko, Akane, Kazuichi, and Hajime are, like, still good? And then the rest of them are despairs, which would also give us um, best boy. Although, I will say, Nagito is a special case, because when you think about it, He's arguably, I mean, we've seen what his normal version is for a good amount of DR2, and we saw what his Despair version was in Ultra Despair Girls, and honestly, I feel like his Despair version might be less psychotic, as crazy as that is to say. So, that might just be a lose-lose, to be honest, but hey, you know, we gotta save Best Worst Boy. 
Oh. So what does that leave us with? I expect the Remnants of Despair to heavily play into probably both arcs. Now, all of that aside, Danganronpa Zero definitely was interesting. It gave us more of an insight into who Junko really was. It was a great story. I... Where I'm stuck... This anime is called The End of Hope's Peak Academy, and I don't know why. Now, I guess that could make sense in the Despair arc, because presumably we'll get to see how Hope's Peak was shut down, along with, again, the world spiraling into the chaos of the tragedy. But for the whole anime to be called that, I'm curious how that pertains to the future arc. It makes sense for the Despair arc, if I'm correct that the Despair arc takes place in the past. I don't know what to make of that for the future arc, though. I'm actually very confused on the title. Again, it makes sense in the past. I don't, I don't really... Like, I get that the thing that links all these characters together is their time spent at Hope's Peak Academy. But, I mean, unless everyone's gonna fucking die, which I guess isn't out of the question, to be fair. I understand that this kind of represents the end of the story, and V3 is something beyond that, whatever the fuck that means. It's going to be interesting, and I'm honestly not entirely sure what to expect here, but I am very excited for this. And, and there were more things I wanted to talk about, but I don't want to drag on anymore. I'm excited to see the OG6. I feel like we have to get all of them. Maybe Komaru. That would be awesome. Does Monica make an appearance in this game? I mean, this show? God, I don't know. I mean, the way Nagito set Monica up, presumably Monica is more like Junko than she was before, if not possibly more like Junko than Junko ever was if Nagito succeeded in his goal prior to him going off with Izuru and the others for the plan that was Danganronpa 2. I mean, again, UDG just fit the holes into 2 really well, but the, the, the big, like, thing that's left in the open, the big thing that hasn't been resolved is Monica Toa. She's still a genius robotics engineer who who has who 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 has you know who in many ways um represents a lot of the worst qualities of Junko. But and she's just out there and obviously was kind of, I guess, weirdly mentored, potentially, by Nagito. Monica's role in this story, if she has one at all, is tricky. Because if this really is the end of the story, I don't see how you exclude Monica after setting her up the way you did in Ultra Despair Girls. She was really the her really, at this point, has been the only true antagonist of the entire series that wasn't Junko and Oshima, when you really think about it. And she survived. I just don't know how she doesn't play into this. I'm really struggling to imagine a world where Monica, if this really is the end of the story, how Monica doesn't find her way into this, but I'm honestly not sure where she fits into this. But I also don't have a good read on this. Like I said, I feel confident the Despair arc is going to further fill in the blanks of what happened, but it's going to be focused on, again, Mukuro, Junko, and the Remnants. That makes sense to me. The future arc, I mean, I don't know. Like, the where we left off, canonically, chronologically, I should say, is Danganronpa 2. And things were going pretty well at the end of Danganronpa 2, because as we found out, the world was finally cooling down and we presumably finished off Junko, because again, who knows, maybe there's another backup, maybe there's more alter ego Junko 
nonsense out there, I wouldn't be surprised. But based on what we've seen, we might have finally finished off Junko, but you can never assume that at this fucking point. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. There's a lot to figure out, and I'm ready to start figuring that out. So, I think that's everything. I don't think there's anything else to, uh... I don't think there's anything else to deeply discuss. Um, obviously, it'll be interesting to see if, you know, there's references to Kamishiro, to Matsuda, and of course, to Ryoko in this. I kind of feel like that's fairly likely. I also feel like Ultra Despair Girls' canon will, has, like, again, I don't know if Kom to expect Komaru in this, but I wouldn't be shocked. Ah, there's so much. That's the thing I keep thinking about. It. It's like, God, there's so much lore building into this anime. And, and I get that it's two cores, but again, I man, there's a lot that they could do with this. And it's going to be interesting. So I am prepared for this to be... I expect this to be good. I'm not expecting this to be bad. I... I am kind of prepared for this to disappoint just a little. Just because I feel like there's so much building up to this anime. And it is... It's an anime. It, it's not something that this story has ever existed as. I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, but I think the, the novel was great. You know, the other reading material I've done is great. And the three games I've played... Uh, at least story-wise are great. Because the one knock on UDG is it's not a very fun game. But as far as a story, it it you it, it could... I mean, it's amazing. It, it has such a great story, and the climax is unbelievable. I mean, I would argue at the very least, I probably would say... God, I love all three of the game climaxes, but I would say that at the very least, I probably love the UDG climax more than the first game climax. If... It's so good. I think the the, 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 me the strength of the message in the climax of DR2 is so good that I think I take that as my number one. Because again, DR2 is probably still my favorite work in the series, even though I love DR0. The only thing that holds back Ultra Despair Girls is just that, like, it w honestly, I probably would have enjoyed it more as just a straight VN with... Uh, cutscenes and like anime you know with all the cutscenes and stuff and the voicing which i understand why it's not that um but or as like a pseudo anime like i feel like that could have worked as a pseudo anime or even probably just an outright anime to be perfectly honest but it's time it's time let's not waste any time Episode 1 of Future is where we start. I don't have the titles besides that. I know, like, the, that we're going to Future Despair, Future Despair, and then the last one is Hope. That's all I really know. I think my predictions are pretty on as far as the setup. But like I said, the one thing I don't think I could predict is what the fuck the story is going to be in, fu in Future. Like, I just have no idea. Like, I feel like... I mean, obviously, they're going to come up with something, but I, to some extent, I I guess less so than after one, but, like, going into two, I had no clue what they could do, and they came up with something fucking psychotic. I feel like going into three, it's just the way it left off. Like, they left it off in, like, a, hey, this isn't over yet kind of thing, and but at the same time, I just don't know. I don't know. Let, let's just jump in. I don't want to keep talking about it. I want to watch the anime. I talk so long that I'm actually going to cut here so that I have, you know, more time to discuss the anime and don't have to make a cut during, you know, during the episode or right after. So I'm going to jump in to episode one of the future arc of Danganronpa 3. This is crazy, but it's time, everybody. Let's jump in to the future arc. Episode one. Of Danganronpa 3, the end of Hope's Peak Academy in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Play. Okay. Uh, I was about to say, that looked like Kyoko to the right. I don't know who that was to the left. Okay, yeah, he's under... Is this right after? 
Is he under arrest for, is it for treason? Yep, yep, yep. yep. The who the fuck are you? New character. New character treason. already dropped. Yep, that makes sense to me. That makes sense. OP? I know there's two OPs. Nope. Jesus Christ. The tragedy. Yep. Yay, Kazuichi helping build the robots that we know. Yes, and we are. Oh my god! I'm already freaking out. I'm already freaking out. These despair forms are crazy. Holy shit. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot to even mention I'm watching this in Japanese because I know that, like, I think most of the voice actors change in English. Among other reasons. Okay, Jesus Christ. Holy shit. This is crazy already. Okay. So, I mean, we know that Monica was largely responsible for the, um, building the Monokumas and all that, but obviously Kazuichi having a part in that as well makes sense. Who the fuck is that? Come on. Hello. Is this supposed to be, uh... Teru Teru? I guess it is! Huh. Interesting. Are we gonna see all the remnants of the spare in this opening? Yep, there's Gundam. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Oh, Ultimate Imposter. Sonya, of course. Oh my god! Oh, that's so good! Oh, that's so good! Oh... Oh, Jesus, I just have to mark out for this. I'm so sorry. This is We're going to be here all day. This is so weird. Yeah, so Ultimate Imposter. So you have Sonya, of course, the Ultimate Princess. And, of course, Sonya would have... A, I didn't even talk about, like, the individual remnants of despair and what influence they could have, right? But, obviously, Sonya would have a huge part in instigating things as a princess of a small country, a very militaristic com country, and you also have um, Mahiru there uh, taking pictures of her and, and of the riots and obviously uh, probably doing a lot to distribute. Like, it's so cool. Like, in this one little thing, we're getting to see a little bit of what each member of the Remnants of Despair did. And, oh, I love how... I mean, I guess we saw Gundam and he looked insane, but for the most part, they're not showing their faces either, which I think is really interesting. Because we haven't seen... And then, of course, god damn it. I just realized Ultimate Imposter was wearing the fucking goggles like in the first trial of DR2. I hate this anime so much, and we're 50 seconds in. I hate this series, is what I should say. It's so good. Oh. My god. Also... Older, by the way, oh, oh my god, we got to see it. Older Hiyoko, which of course we got to see at the end of, um, Older Hiyoko from, uh, uh, from the last case of DR2, and fucking hell, Despair Abuki, my goddess, holy shit. Oh, this is so cool. Also, like, Hiyoko's growth, represent representative of Hiyoko's growth spurt, too. She looks... Fucking sick too. She looks hot, which is weird. Yes, serve it. Oh my God, the remnants, remnants. Yo, UDG, UDG. That's um, holy shit, holy shit. Uh, Masaru Kotoko, my boy Nagisa, Jatoro. Oh my God, oh my God. They're actually showing like what each of them have done in the over the course of the tragedy. And yeah, the Monokuma kids. Oh my God. I'm gonna run all this back and just let it play and focus a little more on the I, like I've I've been reading the subtitles, but like I will admit I'm just like marking out for all of these characters and all these references. Holy shit, UDG, Mikan, what the fuck, Mikan? I, that's hot. Giant Monokuma. This intro is crazy. Yeah, the super high school level despairs, which is what they call them in Japanese. Future Foundation, 
I literally don't recognize a single character in this shot. That's crazy. Interesting. I'm excited to meet these potatoes. Is that supposed to be... No, that's not Izuru. Who the fuck is... Oh, Fuyuhiko, of course. Of course, that's Fuyuhiko. Yeah, yeah, you can tell from his hair. Is that supposed to be, uh... Wait. I gotta see, like, which side did that girl come from? Because I might be... Oh, yeah, yeah, she's fighting the, uh... Yeah, yeah, that girl's fighting the, um... Fighting the Future Foundation, so that is Pekko. Holy shit, Okay. Okay, I almost have to, like, run down the list. We've seen Nagito. Chiaki obviously isn't a remnant of despair because... Sad. We've seen Pekko. We've seen Nagito. We've seen Hiyoko, Sonya, Ibuki, Fuyuhiko, Teru Teru, Mahiru, Gundam. I actually had all their names written down so I could do this type of thing. Um, I actually have them written down from when I first played DR2, but I pulled out these notes. So we have, we've seen Mikan, Kazuichi. So the only ones we haven't seen, Nekomaru, I haven't seen Nekomaru, I haven't seen Akane, and I haven't seen Izuru. So I think we're almost done, because there's only three left to show, right? Yep. Which is ironic, because that's what the remnants are. Yo! We know! We know what's under that eye! It's fucking Juko's eye! That's so crazy! Fucking Pekko. What the fuck, Mikan? Who the fuck are you? And what a world. Yes! Yes! Akane! Akane! Damn, Akane is so ripped. And Nekomaru. So now we've seen all of them except for Izuru. Show me that long ass hair. Yes! 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 Okay. I'm running this back from zero. I'm done marking out. I got to see all the remnants of despair. And I got to see the Warriors of Hope. I guess the only character they haven't shown, which I actually think is really clever if she is going to get involved, is Monica. We have seen everyone except for Monica. Unless I caught it off early and they were going to show her. But I doubt they'd show Monica after Izuru. Is that supposed to be Hina on the left? Because it would definitely Kyoko on the right. So the trial of Makoto, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, under arrest. But, I mean, it makes sense. This is something that... This is a reality that he accepted when he uh, protected the remnants of despair. And that's why they then go on to explain the remnants and, like, why Makoto was arrested for what he did. And they're going to get into the whole DR2 thing, I'm sure. It's so interesting because, like, I imagine people watching this show. I imagine the people who watch this anime without having played the games, which would be really interesting. Because they are they are basically doing this for the people who have never played the games and like read the novel and all that stuff. But it's still interesting. I mean, to be fair, the anime is literally called Dong and Rampa 3, though. Yep. Dude, Mikan. Fucking hell, Mikan. I love the red eyes, too. That's an interesting thing, because in the in the games, they often use, uh, represent despair through the, like, scratched out, like, black and white uh, eyes, but just the glowing red eyes is much simpler. That's... I wonder if that was, uh... Like, supposed to be, like, Toa Tower. Because it looked a lot like... I think it was Toa Tower. But, like, the location from the end of UDG. Mm -hmm. God, dude, Akane is so fucking jacked, that's crazy. 
Also, we got a fucking ninja on our side, on the Future Foundation side, essentially. I love how I said our side. Obviously, I'm on Zuko's side. What the hell? We want chaos. We want despair. I'm, I'm rocking the remnant. Two of my three figures are despair potatoes, after all. Let's fucking go. All right, here we go. New stuff. I wanted to focus on that dialogue and also just let it play uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, literally like, um, innumerable lives lost. Like, I feel like, as grim as the, the art looks, I feel like we still kind of almost downplayed to side future, huh? OP, OP, yo, 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 these flashes are crazy. Also, why are those the wrist thing, those wrist thing, why, why, why does that look like the wrist thing from UDG? What the fuck? What in the world? Is it- it's- it's like it's showing all of their- Sorry, I'm gonna run this back to- Jesus Christ, this- this reaction's gonna take forever. I- the funny thing is, I feel like after this first one, when I get through the first future and the first despair, I'll be able to react to this like a normal fucking show on my channel, but like- that's the thing, it's weird. I'm going into the first episode of an anime, but I have so much context from the games and the novel that it's it, it's like, it's a unique experience for me. So it looks like what we're seeing is every character on screen, most of which, there's a few that we recognize. Like I recognized, I, I think Hina was there. I, I don't know if I saw Kyoko, but it's like, it's what every character's, I think it's supposed to be represent what every character's, um... Um, execution would be. There's no way this is another death game, right? Like, the whole... The whole reason this is an anime is because it's not another death game, right? There's no way they're gonna play another death game. I think. They did have, they did have the things on their wrist, though. And those looked a lot like the things from UDG. Hmm. All right. His OP is pretty cool visually, and I like the song so far, too. Yeah, Death Game is one of the things coming on the screen, too. Who the hell is she? I have so many questions. And that guy. What is that one of these characters? Dead or alive, I want to see freedom. Who the hell? These designs are crazy. Is that was that Yakia? And this guy. Interesting that both of them have the guns to the head. And yep, there's the bullet. There's the bullet. Yep. The original potatoes. Yoko, I think. Also, she had a strap on that would be wild. Punch the glimmer of hope and despair. Yep. Woo! They're doing like a Makoto Miyoko thing like it's fucking... What? Excuse me? What? There's no way this is another death game. Okay, okay. I like that. It was interesting visually because Makoto and Kyoko had this like... Okabe Kurasu thing going, which is interesting. Don't know what to make of that. God, is one of them gonna die? It is, again, I don't know how seriously to take it, right? Like, but, God. There were a lot of hints in that OP that they're gonna play another time. There's no way! It's like this, it's like the weird thing, right? There's no way this is another death game, and at the same time, how else could you end Danganronpa than with another death game? I, literally every single one has been a death game. Except for Zero. Oh, that's really interesting. Third time's the charm. Future, side future number one. Okay, third... No! Third time's the charm and it's gonna be a death game! No! Oh my god, that's a cool building.
Makoto Trout. Yo. Yo, this is cool. This is very Dagarapa music. Ah, oh, it's, the, it's the leaders of all the branches. Former director of Hope's Peak, Kazuo Tengon. Oh, the names are about to be flying. We are never getting through this episode. I am so sorry. I'm sure you guys are fucking loving it. I am losing my mind. Um. So we're going to see, because, like, we know Division 14 is Makoto. Kaichu. Great Gozu is great. I love that. Great Gozu is crazy. Great Gozu. Ultimate Wrestler. Obviously, I'm going to refer to them as Ultimates. One, because that's less of a mouthful. And two, because that's what I'm used to. Yep. A former scout from Hope's Peak. Okay. Kohichi Kizakura. They're just throwing all the names at me at the beginning, which is actually very Danganronpa. Just introduce all the characters at the beginning. Uh... Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, talking about Makoto. Oh, 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 they cooking. I saw pharmacist. Uh, there's three here. Jesus Christ. Do I even want to know about the girl with her fucking mouth covered? Like, what the fuck? Okay. Um... Jesus Christ. So, therapist. Miaya. Miaya. Gekko Gahara. I think Gekko Gahara is probably easier to say. Gekko Gahara. So, therapist. Not super distinct design. I don't know what else to put for his notes. Ranch 7. Okay, I got something. Alright. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah, there would definitely be an uproar at the bottom of the organization. This is crazy, though. This episode's gonna take me forever to get through. I have so many names to write down. We're like... Five minutes in. This is crazy. The lucky thing is that I think, I could be wrong, but I, I have a feeling that in the uh, Despair arc, it's going to mostly be characters we know already. Psycho Kimura, huh? Well, she looks like a psycho. I guess she's wearing a mask because she's a pharmacist and she's afraid of her shit. Ultimate Pharmacist? Okay. There would definitely be an uproar, though. Holy shit. Wait. To have those flipped? Was the scout the girl? Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. To be fair, the girl looks a lot younger, so I would think... I'm just gonna assume the... I don't know. There's nothing about the girl that screams boxer. I'm not actually sure. Fuck. I might actually have... I definitely got the middle one right. Pharmacist is definitely mask girl. That might actually be a dude. I don't even know. 
Um, this is going wonderful. I'll find out which is which when we get something. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to figure those two out later, I guess. What is that voice? That voice is crazy. Also, that's wild. I, I hate this because I don't know which is which. Like, this is so annoying. Like, confectioner. I don't know which one's confe- This is crazy. Confectioner or farmer? I have no idea. Okay, I actually hate this. This is actually the worst. Ah! Holy shit. Okay. I'm gonna double check a lot of this. I have to be really careful, though. Okay, so farmer is... I'm gonna assume that's probably a guy. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I probably flipped the two before, but I haven't checked that yet. This is crazy, though. Also, that design is crazy, by the way. And the voice is even crazier. So I guess it goes left to right when it's doing... The yeah, that's what it is. So I think... Okay, so now I know it's left to right. I... That's totally what it is. It it describes them left to right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this and I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out here. So I definitely have to flip what is it? The boxer and therapist. Yeah, see, I wish it was one at a time. So these two were right, because it was left and right. So that works. That's fine. Okay, so therapy. Yeah, that makes more sense. That's a, a a boxer personality. Sure, why not? Okay, here we go. So actually, no, I just have to flip therapist and boxer. Okay. I apologize for all of this. I'm sure this is boring you guys to pieces, but you, the good thing is this is a video. You can just skip through it if you want. Um, okay, so Juzu Sakakura is the ultimate therapist. No, 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 that's the ultimate box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The names are right. I just haven't flipped. Jesus Christ, I almost fucked it up again. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just am mixing up the name. Yeah, I have all the information of who they are. It's just, it's matching the person to the name. So, yeah, Sakakura is the ultimate boxer. Branch six. And then Miaya. Gekko Gahara. Branch 7 Therapist. Scarf Girl. Okay. Okay. We're getting there. We're almost there. There can't be that many fucking characters left. Okay. 
But yeah, I also I, I I already wrote down Bondi, so I just need the confectionery's name. Alright, give me the confectionary's name, please. Ando. Okay. Ruruka. Ando. Interesting name. Ranch 8. Okay. We're almost there. Yeah, to talk about Makoto. It's almost like that's part of the plan. What the fuck? Why is the bla ultimate blacksmith on the lap of the confectioner? What the literal fuck? I'm here for it. I'm, uh, Sonosuke Izayoi. God, these names are crazy. I don't know how to describe him. I bet it's good. She's the ultimate housekeeper? What the literal fuck? Why is that a thing? I was wondering who this girl was, though. We saw her in some of the opening stuff. This is crazy. They're literally just... I'm literally just filling out this whole page. With notes on these motherfuckers. But these are clearly going to be all the relevant characters that are new. Which is a lot, actually. It makes sense, though. No, Munakata Kunajikijikinikensu. Well, that's the ironic thing. Sure. There's a long way to go. So you That makes sense, because they wanted the 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 future foundation wanted to kill the remnants. Okay, did I get all of them? Holy shit. Yeah. That is what he thought. We know for a fact. That was the plan, at the very least. But that's also true. Wow. Dancing Wolf needs so... The fact that that's her voice is crazy. Okay, here comes this guy. Is this, um... Whatever his name was, the guy who built this place? Yeah, because this is the same guy who was talking to Makoto. Ruruka likes the sound of her own voice, that's the real truth. Dude, the guy is literally just laying on the lap. And there's a few people missing, it seems. 
Yo, what the fuck, bro? Just walked on the table. That's crazy. Okay. The super... For, the former super high school level student council president. Jesus Christ, so he is Munakata. Okay. Kyosuke! Talk about throwing names at people, though. This is crazy. This works a little better in visual novel form. Ultimate... Student Council President. Yeah, I think we'll remember who Kyosuke is. Yeah, it's not the time to squabble, though, that's for sure. Hmm. I'm already getting vibes to a certain vice chairman a little bit. I don't think he's a nearly as bad of a guy as um the a certain vice chairman from another anime, but giving me a little bit like vibes, but more serious and less silly and less psychotic. Yep. 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 Dude, Gundam's is nuts. Ibuki's is nuts. Nekomaru, weirdly, is kind of right. Sonya's is perfect. Really like Yoko's. Kazuichi looks so sick. The fucking Ultimate Imposter just looks so silly. Obviously, we've also seen Izuru's. I will say Maharu's is really basic, but it fits her. Peko looks sick, too. Jesus Christ, Peko's tits, though. Holy fuck. And of course, Mikan just looks the same, just more demented. Akane looks fucking metal as shit, though. Million class murderers is crazy. Hey, Yasuhiro! Yo, that's crazy. The ultimate hope, yeah. そう、高校級の希望だからな。話を聞いてみんとな。本当に苗木誠が希望ならな。それって江ノ島純子を倒したってのも仕組まれたことで、元から絶望の仲間だったってこと。うん。いいことを言う。それなら仲間を助けたということ
あれだけ仲間を犠牲にしてお前もこいつもよくヒーロー気分でいられる I mean, kind of damn, ないぎまことは負傷しており、尋問に適しません。治療の時間を。カスリキズだろ、こんなもの。坂倉。どの道その状態では、まともに喋れまい。いや、なるほど、ちょっと from the perspective of the future foundation it's so weird because they just threw like 12 million characters at us to be fair though that's what they do in dr1 and dr2 this chisa girl yeah yeah she he does not want to call you chisa <laughs> you need me to help you relax. Aww. I'm already getting I'm already getting Ryoko Yasuke vibes a little bit. Damn. She's weird. I feel like she's been emphasized a little though. I feel like she's one of the important ones. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, you can't blame him. Yeah. It's your problem, in other words. No, she hasn't. Yeah, she's acting more like Hina than... Yeah, now, now I'm getting more of the Hina vibe. Aw, it's nice to see Kyoko smile, though. More gauge action. Gauze action. I don't know why I said gauge. What does that mean? Interesting. What? She was a teacher of the remnants? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you should have seen what him, Byakuya, and Kyoko did. You might have, actually. I don't know. Yeah, Munakata is clearly... Yeah, it's a little idealistic, for sure. I don't know. See, that's the thing. I'm not sure. But that's the thing. I assume they've kept secret. Aww. I don't like how much you've said the word hope, though. I, I, I'm already getting Nagito vibes. It's just the, it's just the, the word hope it was ruined by him. Interesting. I do think that those two could do a lot of good together. Uh... What the fuck? Why do you look like... Chihiro? Yeah. 
Interesting. So he's the super, he's the ultimate animator. That's awesome. In an anime, we introduced the ultimate animator. He looks way too much like uh, Chihiro and uh, just that family in general. Because Chihiro's father looked just like Chihiro. Um... Ten. Hey, at least I got to get through, like, ten minutes or so without having to do that again. That's nice. Earthquake? Or a terrorist attack. Terrorist attack. Definitely a terrorist attack. Here we go. But who? Like, is it the remnants? Oh, 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 hey, hey, they're doing the dog and rabbit thing! Oh, that was weird. That was really weird in anime, but I appreciate them trying to do the dog and rabbit thing. Also, the red sky is so dramatic, and I'm here for it. The worst part is we've basically proven that the occult is real based on Ultra Despair Girl. That's the worst part. Yeah! A missile would just launch at you guys. And you idiot. Classic. You breaking crystal balls and tailors all the time. Oh, I love your own voice, by the way. I haven't even talked about the fact that Nayagi's voiced by one of my favorite voice actresses ever. One of my favorite seiyus. But that's a whole nother story. Interesting. Okay. So it would seem. So there's a mole in the group. Why do I feel like she's the mole? I feel like it's Yuki Zome. If there's a despair in here, interesting. They're even setting it up like there's gonna be a mastermind, right? Because, yikes, that's not good. They cleared out the place except for. Oh. A little sus. Yeah, it, 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 they're setting things up for a death game between the members of the future found the many most of the leaders of the future foundation. Jesus Christ, is that a bomb? You're shitting me. Oh, it's smoke. Oh no, my God! They're gonna drag. Oh my God, this is totally a death game. This is totally a death game. This is totally a death game. That's gonna involve Makoto, Hina, and Kyoko. This is wild. Yeah, that's totally what this is gonna be. It's gonna be all these characters in a death game. For some. Who in the world set this up, though? That's the million dollar question. Like I said, based on the end of DR2, if we're to believe that they- Yeah, and the- It's the things from Ultra Despair Girls. Wow. Oh. You have- Eight days. Oh my god! Monokuma! I think I've only heard Japanese Monokuma like once, but... 
Yep. Of course. It's a pretty good voice. Well, there's always someone that control, could control Monokuma. Junko, just even if Junko is dead, it could. Even if Alter Ego's Jun Ego Junko dead, doesn't mean someone else couldn't be doing it. Totally. もう絶滅寸前だよ。そんなお前らに感謝を込めて今日は未来機関の皆さん。いや、いや。ウポポポポ。ゆとり世代特有のゲーム感覚でサクッとこれ。ポジモンにおぞいてるワイド。面白い。
I promise my reactions are not usually like this. Combination of having to write down 20 million names, me geeking out over the remnants of despair, and the fact that I feel like there was so much information going into this. It's crazy that this is mostly new characters, but I shouldn't be surprised. Okay, so now I have more of a read on this, um, obviously. So we're doing another death game, which I'm actually surprised. And the reason why I didn't see this coming is because they decided to make this an anime. I feel, my thought process was, similar to UDG, which was a totally different type of game, I figured the reason DR3 was an anime was because you couldn't necessarily structure it as well into narratively the way that you would structure DR1 and DR2 because, again... I figured it wasn't going to be a death game. I'm actually kind of shocked. Like, I started reading the room and, like, it was like, oh, but I, 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 I wow. I, I can't believe it, but I actually am surprised by the fact that we're doing this again in this anime. What's interesting is we pretty much, I think, know what the despair arc is now. It's specifically going to be Chisa teaching the remnants of despair and obviously in the process we're going to get to see a bunch of them so you know the more i think about it now now i'm i'm second guessing it even more chisa probably isn't the mastermind the reason why is because they can now use the despair arc to show her that's why they killed her first because we're going to get a fuck ton of her in the despair arc i think ah it's tough though because I'm assuming when they say the Remnants were in the class, Junko was in the class too. And if this was Junko's class where she cooked, I feel like Chisa... It's just like it's Junko, and we know how successful Junko is. Like, obviously it didn't, it didn't work on our potatoes, because mainly because of Makoto... <laughs> But also their own will, and that was like a huge part of the story. But we know that in the past, Junko was very successful at turning people. And I don't like... And, and I mean, the whole thing on the Remnants of Despair was they came into contact with Junko. Chisa's going to come into contact with Junko, and like, on a consistent basis. And I'm scared of that. There's a lot here. There's a lot of pieces that lead me to believe that Chisa's cooking and potentially has been a remnant of despair, ultimate despair, whatever you want to call her all along. But where I'm, like I said, but the thing that actually has me start thinking about it more is we're actually going to probably get her as one of, if not maybe even the main character of the despair arc. Like she's going to be portrayed, I think, a lot in the despair portion, the despair side of DR3, which means we're going to get a bunch of her, even though they killed her off first. So from a narrative perspective, it actually makes a ton of sense to kill her off first because we're going to still get to see her, right? So it's like one of those things where it's you kind of have your cake and eat it too, which is kind of convincing me now away from them pulling a DR1 where one of the first people to die actually didn't die at all. And also, how would she have faked her death? Now, obviously, the way that um, Junko faked her death was pretty insane, so it's not completely out of the question. But from what we've seen, I, I think I'm going to move off of the Chisa thing. My initial instinct was like, oh, this, this, the, uh, the Junko, the Junkoism is strong with this one. Um, but yeah, I don't, they're probably not going to pull that. But you never know with this series. This series loves to mirror itself and repeat itself in really weird and creepy and unique ways that mind fuck you. This series is mindfuck the series, just the way, like, DR2 was mindfuck the game. DR0 was kind of a mindfuck, too. And 1 and UDG had elements of mindfuck. So you can never trust this series not to fully fuck with your head. Anyways, I'm going to cut here. I might talk a little more about the episode before we jump into the first Despair episode, but I'm going to cut here. All right, that was, uh, like I said, that was a good episode. I didn't really finish talking about it. I feel like it's hard for me to judge the episode that much because it was basically a giant information dump done in a similar style to how DR1 uh, and 2 do it, but it just comes off so much more 
frantic in anime form as opposed to visual novel form. So it kind of fucked me. Um, now I have a whole page of notes of characters from this series. I got Kazuo Tengan. I got Great Gozu. I got Kohichi Kizakura. I got Saiko Kimura. I got Daisaku Bandai. I got Juzu Sakakura. I got Miyaya Gekko Gahara. I got Ruruka Ando. I got Sonosuke Izayoi. I got Chisa Yukizome, who's already dead. I got Kyosuke Manataka. And I got Ryota Mitarai. And then, of course, Aoi, um, Hiro, Kyoko, and Makoto have all made appearances. No Toko, no Byakuya. And I I'm just going to say no remnants. I mean, we did see little clips of them, but we haven't, like... Again... With the way they left off DR2, it's hard to know, like, what involvement they will or will not have. We're obviously going to see them in the Despair arc. <sighs> I, it's tough, right? Like, I'm so stuck on Monica because they didn't even show her. When they were showing all the Despair potatoes and they showed what Nagito did, which was get captured by the Warriors of Hope and you know, do all that stuff. They showed all of the Warriors of Hope and the Monokuma kids, but they didn't show Monica. And that's like, that's weird. But right now, main candidates are Chisa and Monica. Main candidates for the people responsible for whatever's going on. We'll have to see. I'm excited, though. I, I, I want to watch an episode where I don't have to write 12 million names and actually just enjoy it, which I think will be this episode. So let's check out the despair arc of Rapa 3, the end of Hope's Peak Academy, and jump into the first episode of Despair. The Zetsubo is strong in this one, and it will begin in 3, 2, 1, and play. Also, we're going to get another new OP. <laughs> Is that Junko? The fuck? Oh! What the fuck? What? もちろん、あの人類史上最大最悪の絶望的事件にも言い合わせたわよ。いや、you're... What the hell is this? Are they just giving it away? What is happening? What is this intro? You could already tell that you were supposed to watch this. Yeah, yeah, that leads up to the biggest, most atrocious, despair-inducing incident in human history. The most awful, most tragic, yep. Tale of hope and despair. That ends in despair. That oh, yo, that's so cool, the drawing of hope. Yo, that's sick. That was so sick, yo. Uh, what the fuck? Why is she meta? Why is she doing weird... Why is she doing weird Junko-isms? I'm terrified. Hello, Hope's Peak, I guess. Not how I expected the Despair song to start, but I'm here for it. Let's go. Yes! God damn, just showing the panties and everything is crazy. No oh, fucking Nagito. Of course he gets his own shot. Who are you looking down from the edge, huh? Ah, Juko! With all of them! She's got the whole world in her hands at Mukuro! Yes! Yo, this OP is awesome! It's really basic? But this is sick. The fucking Nagito, man. Yes! Oh, this song is sick, too. And here's our girl. I don't know who that is, actually. Is that supposed to be... What? 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 Huh? 
the fuck? If she is somehow a real person, I will be upset. I will be upset and very happy at the same time. Oh, shit. That's crazy. She probably isn't. Like, that's probably just a, a reference more than anything to DR2, but, like, God, that... Dude, seeing Chiaki at the end of the OP was wild. We're gonna watch this back again. <coughs> I almost choked on that water for some reason. <coughs> oh. I'll finish dying by the end of OP Part 2. <coughs> oh, man. That was awesome, by the way. <coughs> I love this OP, by the way. I really do. <clears throat> oh, Mukuro just in her shadow, and juko has got the whole world in her hands, and it's represented by the remnants. That's so good. Dude, it's so simple, yet this is a, this is an amazing opening. And the song is great. <clears throat> and the little quotes, which are wild, and then sorry, I I guess I had one more mark out moment left in me for when we got um when we got frickin' Chiaki at the end of this OP. That's crazy. If she's a real person. If she was like a real person that died or something, okay, two months after the entrance Yukizuna ceremony. Kimi ni wa nanaju nanakisei daichi class no kitan ni nitsuite moraeru. Hai, kirigiri gakuencho. Yep. Yep. Oh, I love it. They're doing the they're doing it in like hope speak style. And there he is, Jin Kirigiri. Yep. Daddyo. Dude, Kizakura, seeing him in the uh, in the past, Scout, and he also teaches main course, I guess. In other words, it is your class. What the fuck? She just punched her pit and killed herself. <laughs> She really hasn't. Interesting. Munakata recommended her to be a teacher. The picture of him holding up Kyoko. Aww. 1B, huh? It's always something like that. <laughs> Wow, darn. Sonia, of course, being super proper. <laughs> Fuyuhiko not giving a fuck. Yep. Ultimate gangster, let's go. The ultimate Yakuza. <laughs> yes, that is what happened. It's also weird to see. Yep, yep, yep. We don't need these intros, but I appreciate them. And of course, Mahiru. Yep. Jesus Christ, what a demonic. Ew! <laughs> I give praise to the I love Sonya so much. I need to see Despair Sonya in action. It's fine. Technically, he still is. Yeah, she just admits it. Wow. Mikan? Mikan, oh no, she's about to trip and flash us. Yep. Oh, well, at least we don't have to. S and she tied herself up in the process, classic. And her socks fell off, and 
God, what a while. Yeah, yeah, and of course, Yoko hates her. All the bits that we grew accustomed to in, in DR2. Yeah, but no. That's interesting. Interesting. Also, interesting that Pekko isn't there if Fuyuhiko's there. I have to imagine Pekko's nearby. What in the universe is happening? I also, I also am a little creeped out by the fact that... I don't know if you guys agree, but she kind of looks a little like... Wait, do they all see the graphics of Ultimate Whatever? Rotten or Nisa? She doesn't know what that means. Nice. Ew! Oh no. What are you imagining, Sonya? Why are we censoring the worm? The freaking Mekon man. <laughs> you okay, I really like Chisa. Yeah, and I like that Sonya's into it. Let's go. Why not? Holy shit. Oh my god! What? <laughs> He's gonna find a way to make to make all of them respect her, huh? <laughs> Holy shit. Yes! Oh. No, why are we in the men's room? I we'll get back to that. No 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 I'm not letting that slide. We we need to see that. They look at that! The despair arc, and it's going, oh my god, we're gonna get, like, the chibi, uh, 8-bit chibi versions of everyone who's with, this is like our party at the moment. We got, I like how they're separate, yeah, and there's, like, I guess probably spots for all the others or whatever, but we have Mikan, we have Sonya, we have Chisa, we have Fuyuhiko, we have Maharu, and we have Hiyoko at the moment. Oh, this is also so nice, because I know everyone's name. Like, it's pretty burned into my head, I don't think I'll ever have an issue thinking of their names. I also have them all written down anyways, but again, maybe if I was looking for like, like, I don't know if I have like Teru Teru's last name memorized or whatever, like Hanamura. I don't know if I could pull that out of my head. Maybe Nidai for, for Nekomaru, but like, I know all their names. <laughs> I, I honestly probably know all their full names to be honest, but I'm just maybe being a little modest at that. But Oh, it's so much more relaxing. D Hope Arc will be... Or Hope Arc. Fucking Future Arc will be... Uh, it's just, I see Despair Arc. I'm like, a Hope Arc, obviously. Um, uh, future Arc will be a lot... Um, you know, it'll be... I'll have to get used to all these new characters. Where, you know, like, like it's a game. Like it's a new game. Whereas here, it's everyone we know. And Chisa, who is amazing. <laughs> Fucking Yuki Zome sensei Of course you're interested. I mean, it looks pretty similar to any other men's room, I would think. What is that music? This could be- Oh, it's Nekomaru! He's trying to take a shit! Totally. It's definitely Nekomaru. Yeah, Nekomaru. Jurassic Park? Okay. I'm waiting for the flush. Oh my god! Yeah, it's shit, alright. Let's go! What in the universe? Yeah, I love how Sony is just like, mildly excited. There he is! Yep. The ultimate manager. Yeah, it's the most fun. 
I just let it rip a bit too hard. I'm trying to imagine what that would smell like. <laughs> no, I... Stop! Anime, please stop! These are too funny. I have to get looks at them. Like, if you're going to do these things, have them on the screen for more than one second. I get that, um... That's, like, great! Now we have, yeah... Maharu's dead, Iyoko got yeeted, and the rest of them are following Nekomaru. Oh, these are so cool. Ah, oh, Terror Terror, okay. Oh my god, of course Sonya can get to Terror Terror. But yeah, yeah, Junko was part of the class with Makoto and the others, so Junko wouldn't be in their class. Oh no. Of course he's into it. Of course he's into the apron too. I can work with this. God damn it. Yep, because we know he's bi. Or pan or whatever. Okay, that one was funny. That was just him tied up. The fact that they're going to keep doing it for every character is crazy. Yep, Akane. Yep. Ultimate gymnast. And her titties live up to the hype. What in the world is she doing? They actually might look crazier than in the VN. Maybe. Oh, does she smell meat? Oh, that's why we got the meat dish. Oh, that's genius. That was a two for one. Yo, this is crazy. Are we sure Chisa is not just secretly Junko in disguise? Like, what the hell? Hot. What? It's like she's on a cross. Now it's. Yeah, it's. Kazuichi, yep. Yeah. And of course he's simping for Sonya. Damn. Yeah, she's a little more into Gundam. Damn, 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 no! They're gonna be super far apart on the next... Damn! I mean, that's probably... What the... Why? She's in a... Dude, I can't. What on earth? This is Gundam. It's the the fucking oh no, oh no! I forgot what they're called. The four dark devas of destruction. Oh my god! I I was about to kill myself. I was animal shed. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Tanaka the Forbidden One, okay. Yep, yep, served by the four dark devas of destruction. The ultimate breeder. Animal raising committee member, probably a little better. Nice, nice, of the fucking... Yes, yes. Ibuki, let's go! Hormones and love cook meat, I guess. And passion. She had the, a flamethrower guitar might be one of the most badass things I've ever seen. She somehow got hotter. Nice. Why is she the best character ever, dude? She's is amazing. There's Pekko. Shockingly not near, um... I guess they keep it hidden, so that's part of the reason why she's not... But I, I'm surprised she still isn't nearby anyways. Dude. Why is she literally... Dude, I... I'm sorry, am I crazy? Like, no, I'm starting to wonder, like, is she? No, I'm, like, dead serious now. Is she a third sister? Like, is she related to Mukuro and Junko? I'm dead serious now. This is weird. Chisa is... 
like I said, the only character that we've seen in Danganronpa that I feel like... I feel like Junko could do this, right? But I obviously don't think this is actually Junko. And, and obviously it's not because Chisa exists in the future. But... Like, now I'm literally wondering if this isn't a third sister. Like, this is weird. I love her, though. Which would also line up, because Mukuro and Junko are two of my favorite characters in the franchise. So, I mean, Junko is my favorite, obviously. One of my favorite characters of all time. But I love Mukuro, too. I'm dying to see Mukuro in this series. In this anime. Maybe more in Junko, just because we've gotten so much more Junko than Mukuro. <laughs> Hormone Yaki is crazy. Bro is shoving... Ibuki shoving Hormone Yaki in Kuyuhiko's mouth sounds like some wild fan art. No. Yeah. Good job. Of course the pain is delicious. Yeah! Yeah! The fact that she took that from Pekko's hand so easily is insane. That's the thing. <laughs> Isekai! Agarichi Isekai arc. Let's go. Oh. Yep. How unlucky. Yeah, no, you get the whole thing instead. Have as many as you want. Yep. Yep. Oh my god. The ultimate lucky student. Let's go. Dr. Hopper, huh? Interesting. Yes, we love scum like you. That's what makes her wonderful. Yeah, that works. He's just amused. Chiaki, if she's real. Obviously, Hajime. We gotta get Hajime. No, Hajime was in the reserve. Mm. Bro nearly died. I love her. I'm in love, dude. I'm, dude. Yukizome, one of the best characters, might be one of the best characters in the series if this keeps up. I, it's just making me smile to see the DR2 characters again. God, Pekko's so hot. What on earth? She is a bot, I agree. That's crazy. Mitrai, huh? Interesting. Ultimate animator here. Why does it sound like he's beating off? Oh, it's Ultimate Imposter. Okay. He's being an imposter for... Yeah, he's being Ultimate Imposter for Mitarai in this. Okay. So he, post he, was, he was imposter for Mitarai and then became an imposter for Togami. Yep. Wow. 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 I love the weird anime reference there. Yes! Okay, so he is part of the class. Okay. I was trying to rem Interesting. Yep. Yep. Poor guy. Chiaki? What? What? Really? I have so many questions. 
We obviously do ship this after DR2, but... Like, I got chills just seeing her on screen. I assume Gala Omega is like some Galaga thing. Or it might just be Galaga, but like without copyright. でも、私以外でそんなにできる人は初めてだよ。ね、今度見せて。約束だよ。うん。お。I'm so confused. What? She is in the class. She's in there. She's in the dis she actually is in their class. Yeah, because I was going to say, Hajime wouldn't be in the class because he was a reserve course student. Chiaki was a real person. Okay. Theory. Chiaki's going to die. And that was going to be... Chiaki's death acted as a trigger like that was something that tipped the warrior I was about to say the warriors of hope the remnants of despair over the top so I think Chiaki's gonna get killed probably by Junko because Junko wasn't able to corrupt Chiaki but she used Chiaki to corrupt the others or maybe Hajime specifically Izuru, whatever. Interesting. Chiaki was actually a person. That's crazy that Chiaki was a real person. That's... I mean, the, the way that they set her up at the end of the OP, I thought that was going to be more of a running mystery for longer. I'm shocked that they revealed that in um, Despair Episode 1. I will say I'm enjoying this a lot more, but again, future episode one was mostly was a little marred by the fact they had to write down 20 million character names. Thankfully, I know all these characters already. Again, besides Chisa, but even her we met in the future arc. Yes. Yep. よびごっこ知らない去年新設された学科で一般の学生さんを受け入れてるのまあその分学費が高いんだけどねうんあ。そう、<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> so, so Hajime and Shiaki actually had like a real relationship of some kind. Yes, they really are. Some of them are. Oh, Hajime. Oh, it makes me so sad to see past Hajime. Yeah. 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 She was always be the best of us all. Uh, I, I need to figure of Chiaki. She's amazing. Yep. Because that's the thing. A lot of people with talent, you know, some people with talent almost see it as the opposite, right? It boxes you in. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that's adorable. <laughs> Aww. She was able to one-handed enough to wave by. Oh, that's so nice to see him smile. Yeah, there's nobody that, that could get through to him like Chiaki. There's still an empty seat, though. 
It's so fun to hear the actual Danganronpa game music in anime. そうだぜ。授業なんて面倒くさいよ。パフォーマンス極めたいっす。確かに学校の決まりではそうなっているけど。バイ。人生は才能だけじゃないわ。不思議。変わりが人格を磨き、思い出を作るのよ。才能より素
That episode was so much fun. The thing is, too, right? Like, I'm excited for... I The DR2 characters, and I've said this, my favorite cast... It's still my favorite cast in Danganronpa. Like, I like DR2's cast more than DR1's, more than UDG's. I guess more than Zero's. I, 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 Zero didn't really have... And even UDG, I mean, both of those had slightly... I guess UDG's cast wasn't that much small. It was about a similar size to a to a regular Danganronpa game. You have to consider, like, Byakuya, Toko, and Makoto were also in the cast of of uh, Ultra, Ultra Despair Girls as well. But, um... DR2 has my favorite cast in this series. I love these characters. I obviously Nagito is one of the best character, one of my favorite characters in Danganronpa. Probably number two. Uh, Sonia, I love Sonia. I adore Abuki to pieces. Abuki is like, you know, she is way high up there. I think Fuyuhiko is such a well written character. I love Peko. Uh, Akane grew on me quite a bit, to be honest. Not one of my favorites, but still grew on me. Nekomaru is cool. Gundam is amazing. Um, I actually like Kyoko. Mahiru is really cool. Like, I love the Danganronpa 2 cast. They're my favorite. So far, my favorite cast. Really, I think the only thing that's going to have a real shot of beating it is V3, because I don't expect the DR3 cast to beat it. Because I guess the DR3 cast would be all of, would be essentially Hina, Kyoko, Makoto, and all the new characters they've introduced in the first future episode. That would essentially be the cast. I don't know about Hero. I mean, Hero was in the episode, but I, I'm in a, I don't know if Hero, Hero I don't think was in the room, so I assume that he didn't get trapped with them. So it's interesting that's going to be Hina, Kyoko, and Makoto that are going to be the characters, seemingly, um, the OGs in this. Um, you know, Hiro was teased, but we still have no idea what's going on with Toko and Byakuya, and I don't think they can tell this story without appearances from Toko and Byakuya, so I'm wondering how that's going to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, initial impressions of the, of the various branch leaders and just characters that, um, were introduced in the first future episode, not a lot to say. Obviously, I was a big fan of, um, as a wrestling fan, I can appreciate the great Gozu, who's probably going to be one of my favorite characters, I'm sure. I, I, he seemed really cool and had kind of like a righteousness to him, and I'm down for that. Like a baby face... Um, it's ironic because he has a mask or whatever, but uh, a babyface pro wrestler gimmick seems like a really cool uh, thing to have. Only thing would be better would be if he was a heel, but we'll take it. Um, like you know, the pharmacist had a crazy design. Um, the the therapist looked really cute. Like I'm sure I'm gonna like a lot of these characters, but I don't expect. The, an anime portrayal of these characters to be able to win me over the way a visual novel portrayal can. And obviously, I think that's more just, again, I do think that this series is just kind of made for visual novels. I'm not saying this anime isn't going to be great. I actually think the Despair first episode was everything I could have wanted out of it, except for Junko and Mukuro. And I'm going to be patient with that because you know it's coming. Um... But yeah, like that was really fun. Chisa is amazing. I I will say if there's one character that has jumped off the page, that's a new character that is just like I think I found another character I love in this series, it's Chisa. It's absolutely Chisa. She seems like I expect by the end of this anime, she will be one of my favorite Danganronpa characters. Um she's already my favorite of the new brigade. But I expect that to only grow further. Yuki Zome. Um, I feel like Manakata is going to be really cool. Like, I do actually expect to like him a lot. And I think it'll be interesting to have maybe we get more calls between Yuki Zome and Manakata uh, in the Despair arc. And obviously we're going to see the impact and the relationship that those two had. And that will 
will juxtapose the future arc where we're going to get to see how depressed um, and sad um, at whatever they're going to do with Kyosuke in the future arc due to the fact that um, he's dead. Uh, th sorry, that she's dead, that Chisa's dead. I'm assuming Kyosuke is probably going to survive this. <sighs> God. So I guess the other thing I should talk about, Killing Game, right? So here's the unfortunate thing. Hina, Kyoko, Makoto. I think there's no way all three survive, and I think it's it might be optimistic to say two. I know this is crazy, but I kind of think Makoto and Hina die. I feel like... I think it's too easy to kill Hina and Kyoko. I don't think it could be Hina alone out of the three. I think I think if it's if, if Hina survives, I think another one has to. I feel like killing Kyoko is so like to me that's just lame unless they kill Makoto too. I mean they can kill all three, that'd be insane. Um I just feel like you can't do this killing game and not kill you have to kill one of them. It would just, I, 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 there's no way they don't kill one of them. Hina feels like she's there to die. Like, it feels like she, because like, out of the six potatoes, right? Realistically, out of all of them, Hina's probably the one they'd kill first. I mean, it's between Hina and Hiro, obviously, because Makoto, Kyoko, Byakuya, and Toka, Toko are like four of the main characters of the Danganronpa series. I don't consider Hiro and Hina main characters of the series, whereas I would consider Makoto, Kyoko, Byakuya, and Toko. That's why Makoto, Kyoko, and Byakuya were the ones that showed up at the end of DR2, and Toko got to be a main character in her own spinoff game after that in UDG. They're the four main characters, along with Junko, that came out of DR1. There's five main characters of this series in DR1. It's Makoto, Kyoko, Byakuya, Toko, and Junko. And my whole thing is, it feels like they put Hina in here so they could say they killed one of the original six without killing Kyoko or Makoto. That's what it feels like. Which to me means they have to kill Kyoko and Makoto because Danganronpa isn't going to be that predictable. That's too predictable for Danganronpa, right? That's why, like, there's always an interesting mix, right? I feel like in the first game, you still had, like, three of the obvious important people in Byakuya, Kyoko, and Makoto all survive. Even Toko, you know, kind of became one of the more... Like, like when you look at, like, the people that I feel like felt important in the original game, maybe Celeste, you could argue Celeste, is one that was a bit of a surprise. I, I feel like they were building her up to be more of a character that, you know, would be someone who would die closer to the end of the game or not at all. But, I mean, you look at the original game and, and it's like, Byakuya makes it through, Kyoko makes it through, Makoto makes it through. And those three obviously felt important. Makoto, because you're playing him, and Kyoko and Byakuya were kind of the people that kind of rolled through the first game. They were kind of the the people that really orchestrated a lot of what happened in the first game and, and really moved the plot through and, and, and all had a huge impact on the uh, trials. Hina and Hiro obviously are kind of the, the, the wild cards. And in DR2, it's, it's more interesting because I would argue that outside of Hajime, you could make a case that no one that made it through was obvious at all. Like, we're looking at Sonia, Akane, Fuyuhiko, and Kazuichi. Now, obviously, Akane and Kazuichi are kind of idiots. I mean, Kazuichi's an idiot genius. Akane, a little more of just an idiot. Sonia, a bit, you know, can be a bit ditzy herself at times, but she's, she's I wouldn't call her an idiot uh, by any stretch. Um, she's actually quite smart herself. Um, and then, obviously, uh, Fuyuhiko, who has the street smarts. Um the common sense, as it were. Um, none of those characters felt obvious, at least at the beginning. I feel like Fuyuhiko's arc, the fact that he lost Peko and we learned about that, 
the fact what happened with his eye. Everything we that happened to Fuyuhiko over the course of the story made it more likely that he would make it through the game. It just felt like they were telling that story with him, and it, and it just made sense for him to survive. So like, but at the beginning, I mean. I guess, but when you look at when you look at the totality of the game, Fuyuhiko doesn't. None of those characters scream important as early on as say a Nagito or a Chiaki. These characters that don't make it through the game. So it's really interesting that I feel like they were. I think they even realized that the final you know crew in DR one almost ended up a little too predictable, even though there was definitely some surprises in there. And I think they, they made it even more surprising in DR2. All of that is to say, <laughs> this is a wild position if you don't kill one of Kyoko and Makoto. And I really just think it would be kind of lame to kill Kyoko unless they kill Makoto too. Which is why I think it makes more sense to kill Makoto and not Kyoko. I would actually be... That's the thing. If you kill Makoto, you can keep Hina and Kyoko alive. Like, I feel like Makoto's death has so much weight... Uh, to anyone watching this that's actually a fan of the series, that it would just... And he's going to be presented as the main character, I'm sure, because it would just go in old school here. Because he is the main character of the whole series. <sighs> ah, I'm so torn, though, because it's just like, do they have the balls? I, You would think this series has the balls, but what if they don't? I don't... I'm going to be so sad, though, if they kill Kyoko. I really don't want that to happen. I'd be sad if they kill Hina. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'd probably be sad if they killed Makoto. It would probably hit me more than I think it would. Makoto is cool. Like, I like what he represents. I think he's a cool character. I'm just not. Like, he doesn't resonate with me. Hajime resonated with me so much more than Makoto. I love Hajime. I kind of want a figure of Hajime, to be honest. Um, although a figure of Izuru would be sick, too. I don't even know if that's a thing. They're definitely Hajime figures, but... Um, I feel like it's just a character that I'd love to see. And um, I'd love to see some really cool shit with there. Dude, this video... This video is going to be like two hours long for two episodes. I am so sorry. I've never done this before. It's because the opening discussion was so long, but I feel like I have a lot to say. I don't think I'm going to have nearly this much to say in the in the future videos. I don't even... got I, future videos. Terrible wording. I mean in the videos moving forward. I don't mean future art, because obviously in every video we're going to be covering at least one future episode and at least one despair episode. Uh, the sets vary in size, like... But the way they work out, I think every set has at least one future and one despair in it. So uh, we will be seeing both sides of the divide, both um, both arcs uh, in every video, the way it's structured. But this this video made perfect sense, that it covered the first future vi episode and the first despair episode. I thought the future episode was interesting. I think there was a lot of cool stuff there. I liked it. Um... I think it's hard to judge, though, because they threw a million new characters at you. It was the classic early DR experience. The difference was it was anime, so it was more hectic. And I had to pause 20 million times to write down character names. But that's just something I, I you know, obviously, if I wasn't reacting, that would be, you know, easier to maneuver. But it is what it is. Like I said, unfortunately, there are there are limitations and, and, and downsides to it being a blind reaction. I don't know the names of any of the characters, and you guys know how I am with names. They literally just introduced a whole cast. I gotta write these names down to have any chance. <laughs> you guys know how it is. I'm sure you don't mind. And like I said, this is the cool thing about it being on YouTube, or if I have to put it up on Mega or Pixel Dream, whatever. You get the full video, you can just skip through it. If you want. So it'll work out. But uh, the, the Despair episode was amazing. Just getting to see like all of the the DR2 characters just being awesome. This cast is so good. Pekko is so good. This cast is so good. So one of my favorite video game casts of all time. Danganronpa 2. I love that cast through and through. Like it's so strong. Um... <sighs> And just to see those characters being awesome was awesome. 
And, and, and then you add in Chisa, who so far is the standout of the DR3 characters. And you add her as their homeroom teacher. And it's just like, dude, you throw in Mukuro and Junko, I'm going to come. Like, I am going to bust a nut on camera. That's going to be crazy. Anyways, I didn't expect this video to be around two hours long, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. I'm excited for DR3. I think the future arc's going to be interesting because it's going to represent the end of the main Dong and, mainline Danganronpa story. And the Despair arc's just going to be awesome because DR2 is the best game and 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 i'm i'm, I'm ready for more dr2 care like this is the thing because i talked about this so much in ultra despair girls about whether or not we were going to get remnants of despair we got a remnant and then we got the warriors of hope which were basically mini remnants um but now we're getting the remnants of despair where it'll be interesting is will, will how or will they come into play in the future arc? I, I think there's no way they don't, given the way they're writing this with Chisa as the bridge between the future arc and the despair arc. I feel like they have to come into play at some point, but it's like, will did Chisa and Chiaki and now Makoto and, and, and as well as their own bonds and everything through the Neo World program, was that enough to save them? what's the status on the on the remnants like we just don't know yet like that's such a that i feel like the remnants weirdly enough are the biggest mystery in the present slash i guess future um whereas in the past it's just let's see how this all happened let's see how junko worked her magic i'm fucking down god i'm gonna come when junko shows up also the ops and eds are awesome I, I will say, I think I love both of the EDs and the Despair OP. I feel like I need to see and listen to the Hope OP again. Because I think the Hope OP was really cool. But I feel like it was trying to be like kind of dark and gritty and a little edgy. And I don't think that meshed stylistically as much with the style they're going for. Because like both OPs are very stylistic. And I feel like... Like, the visuals and even, to some extent, the song worked better uh, with the the vibe they're going for in the Despair arc. It's really ironic, because the future arc is all gritty and edgy, and the Despair arc is all, like, really positive and, like, uplifting. Which works for me, because we all know I'm Team Junko. I'm Ride or Die, Junko, Nagito. Again, the Remnants are my, fa like, my favorite cast. Like, that in and of itself basically tells you, like... You know what side I'm on. This is a sick logo, bro. Like, why wouldn't you want that on your eye? Anyways, I had such a blast with this. This was wild. This felt more like... Like, it's weird, because I was reacting to a show, but it almost felt like I was doing a Let's Play to a new Romper game. It didn't feel like reacting to a new show, or even returning to a show. It honestly kind of felt like reacting... Uh, or playing a Danganronpa game. Which, to be fair, we still have another one in the tank. v is coming eventually, and that's going to be... That's going to be crazy. I can't wait for that. But, um... Yeah. God, I was planning to record more than I'm going to. I'm going to just wrap up. Because I'm recording this on uh, Thursday night. Technically, it's almost 2 in the morning now on Friday. Uh, I'm just going to get the... The Gintama video finished in a little while. And then call it a night there. I was going to record a whole other video but uh i didn't expect to be spent this long on two episodes of danganronpa i knew the intro was gonna be long but i can't believe i still spent so much time talking about this but i'm so excited and i feel like it is such a unique situation there's so much story from dr1 dr2 dr0 udg that i have to unpack and sift through for this series and then there's all the fanboying fangirling whatever i don't know you tell me, am I fanboying? Am I fangirling? Is there a difference? Am I a boy? Am I a girl? That's up to Junko. Anywho, uh, if you guys want to support the channel, Patreon, Discord, blah, 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 description, links, fun times. Maybe maybe this reaction was unedited in the description. Maybe I got it up on YouTube. I actually have a little bit of hope that this will go up on YouTube based on um, early testing. We'll have to see, though. But uh, whatever the case may be, Without any further ado, it's time for me to bid you adieu. The Flaming Shark, signing out. 
Hope you all have a wonderful, fantastical day, and I'll see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace.